So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and today we're going to be talking about my productivity apps. So my top six productivity apps that I use strictly on iPadOS when I'm getting anything YouTube related done or anything other that I need to get done from a work related standpoint. So without further ado, let's talk about those top six because we're going to talk about not only productivity, management apps, but then also some photo editing apps and things along those lines that help me get my thumbnails done. But without further ado, let's hop right into it. <music> So let's talk about app number one. So the first one that I use is actually called Taskade. And they're a task management software that allows me to kind of visualize exactly what I'm doing from a project standpoint, right? So every video that I have has its own little form of getting itself done. So I like to make a script depending on what the video is, think of video ideas, thumbnail ideas, and then how I'm gonna edit them all together. And there's also different phases to each one. So I'm gonna show you two different versions of Taskade, right? The first one is the application itself. So if I go to the application itself, this is what you see. So if we go back to the main home screen, this is Taskade in a nutshell. It's built for iOS, iPadOS, and it's got applications for Windows and Mac OS. So whatever device you're on, you'll be able to access Taskade. But I tend to avoid the actual application itself unless I'm jotting down quick ideas. If I have something quick that I wanna write down, then I'll just hop into a video timeline, hop in here, and then jot it down in one of these little tabs right here. But the reason these tabs look a little disorganized is because the view that I actually run this on is a little bit different, right? So if I get out of here, I actually like to use the web application a lot better. So if I go into Safari, go into taskade.com. So let's go out of here, go to taskade.com. And this is the Taskade home screen, right? And Taskade is, again, great for task management and it's great for Teams. Right now, I kind of run it alone. I do have a video editor as well that sometimes helps me out. So they're shared on this itself and you don't need like a Taskade account. You don't need a special email or anything. Taskade is 1 million percent free. So I'm gonna link all the different applications that I use down below. Give it a shot because if you go into my video timeline, this is where I manage all of my projects that I'm moving towards, right? I have it in this board view. So what you can do is change the way that you view certain data. So you can do a mind map, which is also a very cool one to view everything in. You can view actions, you can view it in the list, which is what the application, so the iOS and iPadOS applications default to, but I like to view it in this board view because what I can do is now I can, first of all, move through, which is great for the iPad because it works great with touch. So just move this over and you can see that each little section is where each video is at. So right now I just have video ideas here, then I have the film section, edited, thumbnail complete, and then I have ready for upload. And once it's done and ready for upload, then I check it off. So basically when I'm done, I check off one of these things. So for instance, if I wanted to do the best video conferencing app, I have a video idea and now I'm filming it. All I do is I move it over, drop it in here, and now it's good to go. And now I'm in the filming section. If I'm done with filming and I'm editing it, move it over here, keep scrolling over. So grab these little dots, drag to move it, drop it in there, and then thumbnail completed. And that's how my timeline and my flow works with Taskade. So, Taskade is a great application if you want to get like a good visual of some of the projects that you got going on and just, you know, align them properly and get some sort of standard operating procedure with your YouTube channel or with anything else that you want to get done. The next application is an easy one. It is LumaFusion. So if I open up LumaFusion and you guys can see that I have my own custom icons down here, I'll link those in the description below as well. But this is LumaFusion. If you guys haven't seen it yet, you guys haven't played with it and you guys aren't in the video editing world or trying to get into the video editing world, LumaFusion is that great middle ground between a free like beginner level application and then something like Final Cut Pro or something like Adobe Premiere or something like that where it's a lot more money and a lot more investment in terms of how to learn it and actually use it properly. So LumaFusion, like I said, is right in between there. It's built for iPadOS and iOS actually. So if you wanna run it on your iPhone, you 100% can. And I've seen the Everyday Dad actually make a video on processing, editing, and exporting a video from an iPhone SE and it runs really well. So I don't know how they optimize it so well to run on iPad OS, but right here you can see these clips are in 4K 30. I have a, a single timeline, I have a, a song I have a song below it, and then I have other 4K 60 footage moving in slow motion as you guys can see. So LumaFusion is great for video editing. Depending on when you get it, I think it normally retails for 40, but you can always get it on sale for like 30 or 20 bucks. When I first got it, it was $20 and it's a one-time purchase and you never have to purchase it again. So there's no like subscription service. And it just works really well on the iPad, exports extremely well, and you can export directly to YouTube as well with this little share button down here, pressing movie and pressing YouTube down here. But 
that is Luma Fusion in a nutshell. Like I said, it's just the video editor of choice that I use to get these videos done, and it works really well. And the export speeds, even from a 2018 iPad Pro, are unreal. The next application has to be Microsoft Office. So not the entire suite, but Microsoft Office, the new application that came out for iPad OS. If you guys have been following the channel, then you know that Microsoft Office released an iPad OS specific application, which is like a hub for the main Microsoft suite. So Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft PowerPoint can all be accessed, edited, and run directly through this application. So if I wanna open up just a simple Excel sheet, a sample data insurance sheet, you can see that I'm opening it up inside of this Microsoft Office application and it's not kicking me off to another Microsoft Excel application or the web portal. And then somebody did ask me one of my Microsoft videos if you guys, if you are watching, that they couldn't do specific colors on Excel sheets for different cells. But you can clearly see here that I have different color blues. If I go in here, splash a new color in here, let's make it purple. You can see that I can customize each single cell individually on the iPad Pro. So hopefully you can fix your issue for that person if they are watching this video. But again, I'm still, as you can see, if I come out of here, you can see that in here it shows I'm still in the Office app. I didn't leave it to go to Excel. And I just go back and I'm back into the Office hub. And then the biggest thing I think is, yes, it's a nice little hub to have, but then also you get these new tools. So you're able to sign PDFs, scan PDFs, transition PDFs to words and words to PDFs. So you can easily do that, which is a tool that I used to use from a third party to get a lot of that done. So that is Microsoft Office. It's basically the Google Drive version of Microsoft on iPad OS. So you're able to edit, create, and finalize documents from Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. You get these new tools and you get to work with PDFs a lot easier when it comes to other Microsoft applications. So the next application that we're gonna be talking about is actually also in the Microsoft suite, and that's Microsoft OneNote. So if we open up OneNote right here, this is my note-taking app of choice if I wanna do more than just jot down a couple things. Because I do use a native notes application from time to time if I wanna jot down something quickly, but with Microsoft OneNote, the reason I like it is because of how customizable it is, right? And how well it works with the Apple Pencil. So if I wanna change up paper styles, get something college ruled, I can. And here I can just draw and say, hello, sub to the channel. And it feels even better with my paper-like screen protector on the iPad Pro. And it's actually, I'm using the iPad Pro on this Atechi stand, so I'm not even using the Magic Keyboard. And I'm writing with it kind of up right now, and it works very well. So make sure that you have the right tools that you want to make sure you get the best experience possible. So again, Microsoft OneNote is awesome because not only do I get the ability to just take down random notes and things like that, but then I also have the ability to do ink to shape. So basically if I draw a circle, it makes a perfect circle. Very similar to what Notes now does because of iPadOS 14. So if I draw a square, it makes a square, which is perfect, that's the ink to shape. But what OneNote has over regular notes is this infinite canvas that I can now zoom out and start to write stuff on this side and then zoom over here to get it done over here. So this is something that I wish the native Notes app had, which is that infinite canvas. And I know that there's other note-taking applications that do that, but I just love OneNote. I'm in the Microsoft space anyway, so might as well use it to my full advantage. And I love OneNote for note-taking, whether it is for work, school, or personal just note-taking opportunities, things like that. And then the next two applications have to do with photo editing, right? So for my thumbnails, I do a couple different things. I use two applications mostly. So I use the regular photos application, which that one doesn't count out of the two, to just make it to the correct aspect ratio, which is at 16 by nine. And then after that, I move it to an app called Pixlr. Now the one thing with Pixlr, which is annoying, is that it only works in portrait mode. So again, it's gonna look a little funky on the screen right now because it's in landscape, but it only works in portrait mode. And basically it's a simple way to just create something brand new from scratch, right? So if you have maybe an, a picture already that I have in mind, and then I wanna start overlaying some things, so I can just go into here, press double exposure, you know, add in whatever I see fit, whether it's, you know, let's say something like this, I can add it in, make it cool, write stuff around it, add text. And it's just the app that I use that I've used for a very long time and I know how to use it. There's nothing super special about it, I wanna say, but it's very beginner friendly. And I've used this even back when I had my fitness channel like five years ago. That's how long I've used Pixlr. And they have a web portal as well. So Pixlr is one that I recommend. And then finally, the last one is actually Pick Stitch. So this is where I bring it if I ever need something to finalize. Maybe I'm doing a comparison. So if I'm doing an iPad Pro versus a MacBook Air, I'll come in, use the fancy version, do the slash in the middle right here, pick this one, and then I start to add different things that I want to maybe go into my favorites, move this one in here, press done. You can see that it's halfway there. Maybe one of these pictures, which are nice, right? And then that's how I start doing my side-by-side -side thumbnail comparison thumbnails essentially, right, with Pick Stitch. 
but that's pretty much it when it comes to my main use productivity applications, but let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. But that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, everyone. Like I said, these are my most used productivity applications for my iPad Pro. I use them every single day, especially when I have YouTube videos in mind because it involves LumaFusion to create the video, my iPhone to actually record the video, then those two photo editing apps, PicStitch and Pixlr to actually edit the thumbnails, Taskade to manage all the different projects that I have going on, all the different video ideas. So it all kind of just works together in one and it's been working well for me. So overall, I love those six applications and hopefully you guys can take one of those, two of those, three of those and add them to your workflow because my exact workflow is not gonna work for you. So use whatever works for you, take some ideas, see if it works into your workflow and if not, on to the next. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and until next time.